Hello everyone, I'm excited to be able to teach you this technique on making flat long shadows and adding them into your composition. I have prepared some simple animations, so you don't even have to have a composition if you want to train those shadows. Here are a few really simple simple animations, so you can just download this file from the resources and work on it and you will be able to train those shadows alongside with me. Ok, let's go to the first technique, it will be really fun and there is a bunch of useful tricks I want to show you, so let's get started. Open up your favorite animation tool which is After Effects and if it isn't it will be because After Effects is so awesome. Let me show you the first composition I prepared here. This is a simple animation where a timer icon and a text appears on the screen and they fade out later on. As you see in the compositions we have time, which is the text, and the time icon, which is the orange timer icon above. You have also the original text if you would like to change the text or use it for something, and the background. Now we will add the shadows to those two icons. We will prepare all the effects, we will save them as a preset, and then we will be able to drag them into our composition with one click. I will no longer bother you with any introduction, let's get to work. I will select the first layer, which will be the time, and I'll go straight to the effects and preset panel. If you don't see this panel, please go to window and open up effects and presets. In the effects and presets, type in CC radial fast blur. This is the first effect we will need to complete our long shadow. So I just double click on the long shadow to attach it to this layer. The effect is already applied and the change we need to make here is raise the amount to 100. This will be our base for the shadow. Something useful to know here, this center property will determine from which angle the shadow will be displayed. We can of course adjust that later, but it's important to know about this already in the first step. We have several more effects to add, let us continue. If you have After Effects opened, you applied the first effect and raised the amount to 100, we can now continue. The second effect we need is Matte Choker. You can write Choke and please apply the Matte Choker effect by double clicking on it or dragging it over to the effects control panel. Once you have the matte choker applied, please lower all softness levels to zero and the choke one to a negative amount. Let me do this right now. Geometric softness one, zero. Gray level softness one, zero. Geometric softness two, it was zero by default. And gray level softness zero as well. Now I can go to the last effect, which is choke, and put it to a negative number of minus 127. You can already see what this effect does. It chokes the entire mat we have above, which is the CC radial fast blur, and without any softness, it creates a crisp, flat effect. If you would play around with the softnesses, it would really disturb the effect we want to achieve. So this is the second effect you want to have applied. CC radial fast blur, and matte choker. Now it gets really really simple. We will use our favorite effect which is the fill effect because we want to have one color across the entire shadow. So I choose the fill effect, I place it under the matte choker and I change its color to a dark one. Let's say I want a similar color to here. So I pick with the background color and I just lower the brightness to for example this amount. Alright, this looks neat. And what's beautiful here, we can play around with the fill color and opacity to create the effect we want to achieve. For example, if you want a really really light background, you lower the opacity to the amount you want. I want a really deep, hard, visible shadow, so I'll go to around 50, maybe 40%. Alright, now we have the last effect to apply to complete our flat shadow applied to this layer. The last effect will be CC Composite. Apply this effect, uncheck RGB only to have both layers visible. The most important thing here will be the choice of the blending mode. I will stay with in front but you could also go behind. If you have more layers with those shadows this will play a big role but right now in front is perfect. Let's stay with it. 
and the CC composite is applied. If you go to Wikipedia, you find out that compositing is the combining of visual elements from separate sources into single images, often to create the illusion that all of those elements are in one image. And CC Composite does exactly that and you can remember about this effect in your future projects. Of course, not only on this long flat shadow, if you have several effects applied and they make your main layer invisible because they influence it so heavy, CC Composite will create an illusion and display both all the effects you have applied and the original layer because normally without CC Composite you would have to copy this over, kill all the effects and you would have two layers, one for the text and one for the shadow. But this is a imperfect solution. You want to have your project as light as possible and you only want to have one layer instead of two. So you use CC Composite, you delete this old layer because you don't like it and we are ready with the flat shadow. As I told, what the downsides here are, it's not perfectly parallel. This is a great technique because it's so simple, so quick and it creates a really lively free effect. If you have a displacement like I have here, just select the layer and move it one frame to the right. Now it will work perfectly. If not, just save the project and reopen After Effects. Perhaps it's something with the buffer size. I'm not completely sure, but it isn't a big problem. Just reset After Effects. If you want to shift the light source, just click on CC Radio Fast Blur, click on Center and place the center where you want. You can of course keyframe it, move it over time and place the keyframe somewhere else so the shadows will be really live and visible. So what do we have to do now? Select all four of those effects, hit on animation, save animation preset. I will save it and name it LS Technique 1. And right now in our effects panel, under animation presets, user presets, I have all as Technique 1. If you can't see it, just right click here and refresh the list. Now. Let me make the timer icon finally visible. I have the time icon selected. Now I just double click on this technique and voila, I have the effect already applied. I can just shift the center and we have our composition ready. The long flat shadows are applied and what's most important, they are dynamically reacting to the composition. As the animation flies, the timer icon goes in and the shadow reacts to it as it would have a light source and in a matter of seconds, a really great flat shadows are applied to this composition. A super useful After Effects hint and what I like to do would be creating a null control layer to control both shadows at one time. Let me show you how to do this. I right click, click on new and create a new null object. Let me maybe call it light source. All right, I have the light source. I click on the light source and I press P to bring out the position of it. Now I click on my text and on the CC radial fast blur, we have our center property. Now watch how simple it is to connect both of these. I go to CC radial fast blur. I hit left alt or option key if you are on a Mac and I click here on the center property. I click the little stopwatch and it automatically opens the expressions for the center property. I just use the pick whip and I link it with the position property of the null object, which is the light source. I do the same for the second, for the timer icon. I click once again here on the center by holding left alt. I click, I use the pick whip and I combine it with the position. What do we have now? Our null object will determine from which position the shadows are displayed. Since this null object is linked with the center property of this effect, it will deal as a light source. And I could, for example, hit a keyframe on this second, hit the keyframe, move it over. It will automatically create a keyframe. Maybe go, go back a little bit. I want to have it just like a sun. I maybe play around with the handles a little bit here 
more like that, more like that, more to the top. Okay, and now it creates a little sun effect on this point. It travels along with the icons. I hope you really like this first technique. It has some pros and some cons. For example, it doesn't create a perfectly parallel shadow, but that's also a benefit because it looks more live, more fluent and really dynamic once you place it into a composition and it gives it a little bit of a cartoonish style. So it's a really, really useful thing to use. Also, it's so simple to change the opacity and of course to apply it. I really hope you got curious and want to learn more in After Effects and to create those shadow. If you are interested, please proceed to the next lesson where I will show you something important to know about compositions and this will be really something useful for all your future After Effects projects you will be creating.